Jordan Langhennig, and today I'm going to show you how this man can turn this photo into a piece of Renaissance art. Leonardo Bonacci, popularly known as Fibonacci, Leonardo of Pisa, Leonardo Paisano Bigolo, or Leonardo Fibonacci, was born in Pisa, Italy, somewhere around 1170 to 1175. As a young boy, Fibonacci accompanied his father, a seafaring merchant, to Bugia, a trading port well known for its wax trade in what is modern day Algeria. There he was introduced to an amazing concept Arabic numerals. Fascinated by the efficiency of Arabic numerals, Fibonacci traveled the Mediterranean to study under Arab mathematicians. Up until this point, Europe had only used Roman numerals, which had difficult place value notation and only seven characters. We also didn't have a symbol for nothing, or zero. Leonardo recorded his observations in his book, Libra Bacci, or in English, Book of Calculation. This book kick-started the use of Arabic numerals across Europe. In Libra Bacci, Fibonacci presented and solved a problem about the reproduction of rabbits under uh, <coughs> unsophisticated circumstances. Anyway, the problem was that one rabbit plus another rabbit equals two. One plus two equals three, and two plus three equals five, and so forth. This is known as the Fibonacci sequence. One, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen, twenty-one, thirty-four, fifty-five, eighty-nine, one forty-four, etc. This sequence was found to have been known by Indian mathematicians from as far back as the sixth century. The Fibonacci sequence can be put into a ratio. 1 to 1.618. This is called the golden ratio. So, how do these numbers fit into a picture of guys playing basketball? Or any art for that matter. When you put the Fibonacci sequence into tiles and draw an arc from one side to another in each of the tiles, you get what's called the Fibonacci spiral. It is the visual illustration of perfect proportion and symmetry, and can be observed in essentially everything in creation and nature. Like this egg or the sunflower seeds in spiral groups of 34 and 55. The same thing for the arrangement of this pine cone seeds. The spiral is especially evident in the cross-section of this nautilus shell. Even in one of the smallest forms of human life to entire galaxies, one can observe Fibonacci spiral. Look at how the spiral fits into the profile of a human face. Pretty neat. During the Renaissance, proper proportions began to become evident in art. A drastic improvement from the somewhat crude proportioning of art from the Middle Ages. Notice how the small tiles and arcs align with the detailed features of this portrait, the girl with the pearl earring. And the Mona Lisa too. And even in this scene. Now that you know how it fits into Renaissance art and nature, let's see how it ties into our basketball picture. So you'll notice here uh, the position that the players are standing in. Um, each one of them has their own unique angle. Um, this is very important to uh, the different ways that we'll proceed the Fibonacci spiral. So I'll go on ahead and put up the first one. So in blue here we have the uh, first Fibonacci spiral. You'll take note of uh, the way that it curves around uh, the different stances that they have. Touching the top of his sock, which goes up to the top of his shoe moving up along and it perfectly curves around number 12's back so you'll see from number 12's head to number 11's head 
that, that is perfectly aligned, goes up to the top of number 11's fingers, down that angle, and that is absolutely perfect. Their fingers across the basketball, across the arc, are brilliantly aligned. So that goes down to the floor, which touches the bottom of his shoe. In the second spiral, we'll firstly note that this is absolutely magnificent the way that his hand is dissected in the uh, different arcs in the smaller tiles. That goes across the bottom of his shorts to the uh, top of his bottom. <laughs> um, across that arc, again, we see the bend from uh, his back. So this line touches his elbow brilliantly. Again, the uh, across the fingertips and across the top of the basketball. We'll follow this arc down and notice how number 15's head and his elbow are perfectly aligned with the arc. So this line perfectly follows the free throw line, actually, as well as it uh, balances across the top of where his shorts would be. So you'll see how that goes from his elbow to his hand, curving around his back, and we'll see the next one here. This one, from the crown of his head all the way to his jaw, we see these, uh, these tiles and absolutely beautiful how perfectly they're aligned uh, across his jaw. So we'll notice how this arc sweeps down around his shoulders and follows up his arm, the inside of his forearm. That leads up to this line, which goes across the bottom of his nose to the top of his head. Again, goes to his chin, cutting the basketball directly in half. Uh, we'll see this arc goes across the top of their heads and back to his back again. In this spiral, um, we'll see how that lines up in the middle. The bottom of his shoe uh, touches that arc. That goes across uh, his knees to, again, where his, the tops of his shorts would be. Um, we see his hip muscles are uh, <laughs> sort of right there in those squares, or tiles, I should call them. Uh, again, we'll see this arc from the tips of their fingers to the tops of his head. And uh, that follows again through their, uh, their elbow. Okay, moving along to the next one. Firstly, amazingly, from the top of his head, it looks like number 10 is reclining on this arc. Just absolutely brilliant. So from the top of his head to his armpit right there, actually cuts out number 12's line of sight. Um, so that'll go from his shoulder blades down to the uh, down to the floor in the shoe. We'll follow over here. We'll see this arc, and it perfectly cuts his face into little pieces. Even his ears, if you'll notice right there, are put into two individual tiles. So we'll follow this arc again. Tips of the fingers, basketball. So from the top of his head, it goes around that way. This one, we'll see his head again. It is being diagrammed. Uh, you'll see right there how it falls from the crown to his brow. Following that arc again, we see the top of number 15's head to inside of his forearm. We'll see uh, this part from the tip of his eyes to his nose that again curves around his uh, his hindquarters <laughs> so that that intersects both of their knees quite nicely that goes up uh, his center of mass this next one you'll see that all of their knees neatly fit into this little area That curves around, goes to the Nike logo actually. That goes around to the uh, top of his shoe. 
curving around again, going through his knee, through the middle of his head, intersecting through both of their arms to the top of his head. And again, we see number 12 is uh, hanging onto this nice straight line right in between him and number 11. So that line nicely matches up with the free throw line uh, directly above it. So when we put all of these together, what we're beginning to mass is this really symmetrical mess. Right there we see that his head is perfectly engulfed in this little almond-shaped section. The bottom of his nose to the top of his head, you'll notice. We see his face, and then that muscle right there is actually perfectly aligned with that arc. Uh, that arc goes through the top of his head and then through his eyes. Shoulder blades match up with the floor. Then we see their knees right there, and even their feet are nicely collected in that little area. Up here, again, we see that nice arc going from the tips of their fingers to number 15's elbow. So, so beautifully symmetrical. It makes me a very happy person. all of these different points of congruency uh, all aligning up we see his hip muscles <laughs> um, right there are very nicely accentuated by those arcs number 10's hand we see is uh, following up through number 12's arc tops of his sock So after all that, I think it's just so neat the different way that Fibonacci Spiral can be applied to, uh, to this photograph. And uh, thanks for watching.